If Abe lives in the Empire of Dirt, I have to live in the Kingdom of Trash. Yes, welcome to my secret castle of uh, office furniture where I've, I've got absolutely no room to move about so we need to do something about that and someone requested I'd actually do a video about how I made, made that thing so I figured why not uh, because uh, this uh, thing, I'm thinking I'm going to move that to the other room since it's so low uh, as it'll actually slide underneath a 70 centimeters bench whereas it's ridiculously uh, undersized for being here and uh, I have managed to scavenge this little cart thing which has these rather decent looking wheels on it they're just uh, one way wheels, no casters but I figured we'd make another one of these uh, cupboards uh, cupboards if that's the right word drawer boxes and uh, put the off-road wheels on it and uh, have it in here while that one moves into the electronics shop when I get around to uh, redoing the bench over there. And here's what uh, one of these drawers look like. Drawers, cabinets, cabinets of a word. Uh, what these cabinets look like without the drawers installed. So they're just plastic slides, nothing too fancy but they clearly have held up to time since these are probably 15 to 20 years old and I've got some even older ones which still work. They're made out of 80mm uh, fiberboard with some real wood braces top and bottom and that's because these uh, have been an integral part of a desk. Uh, they uh, came with a little leg underneath each of these planks and then the desk surface one of these uh, would just uh, rest on top with uh, one of these uh, 70 centimeter tall frames in the other end so these are basically what provided the rigidity to the desk since uh, these aren't very likely to scissor back and forth due to them being very very wide for a table leg uh, but in this case uh, we're going to be doing some changes to them. Uh, I need to get rid of the locking mechanism on one of them in order to actually fit two together neatly uh, and uh, this is the one that's going to lose its lock because it's all horribly... Oh, oh. Oh, oh, that's just grimy and horrid uh, and in order to do that we need to uh, undo this one in order to access uh, the screws underneath and pull this off these are just stapled in place, but uh, on the other set uh, it went very well to just uh, hammer this back in with the original staples uh, and it uh, seemed to take very well so it must be some rather decent quality fiberboard to, <laughs> to be able to handle two insertions of the same staples uh, we'll need to uh, fix these drawers, pretty much all of them save for the plastic top ones uh, have, are not built very well, uh, they're, they're just a fiberboard, but the only thing holding them together in the back is the uh, lamination, white lamination. So it tends to kind of crack and fail, and then the drawers just fall apart and won't work at all. So I've got some uh, small nails to just shove in there manually. This was an only size pack of assault, the slimy bastards. But uh, that's it, I'm just gonna probably pad this with some, like, some old time-lapse footage I got when I did the first one and uh, take this off and put it back on. Oh, I just broke into the lock and no wonder this isn't working right. Somehow they managed to get a piece of plastic in there. Well, that's not going to be good for anything. It wasn't there on the other one so that's clearly just not supposed to be there or perhaps Perhaps this used to be like a bushing around the middle pin. Yeah, that's that's probably what it's been. But it's just been sitting off to the side, yeah. No wonder it's fucked. Time to get it out of there. I'll just fold these tabs over so uh, once I break that pin, 
and I can just pour this out of the top. There we go, that's gone. Cheapo lock pulls, I didn't even have to cut the pin, I could just bend the bar over it. This is not high security. There we go. Along the base backup was so much easier than uh, I did expect. Seems to be rather good tolerance and fat metal in those staples. So to get them back in, I'm just going to use the lock bar, except with one of these tabs pulled out because that fits rather neatly across two of those. I can just go with a hammer and tap them in real easily. And there we go, that's uh, cabinet number one done. So now I've just got to uh, clean the other one up since I can keep the lock on that since you know it's going to be on that side. Uh, don't, don't need to remove it, it's going to have a nice lock too since it's not fucked. Uh, and I can move on to cleaning and nailing these guys. Uh, that's just going to be a whole bunch of tick, 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 tick. Uh, would be nice to have a more proper stapler than I do. Or rather, more proper staples. I think this one takes up to 40mm, but I'm going to have 8 so yeah. The nails are probably going to be a better solution in the long term anyway, since they're a bit ribbed. Ha! Nailed it! Whoa! Free paper clip. Now there we have the second cabinet, all uh, re-hammered on the uh, staples and cleaned up and ready to go, and here are all the drawers cleaned up and ready and nailed and ready to go. So I've been thinking about the wheel mounting and uh, for, for the other drawer I used uh, just this normal wood screw since uh, I used some cheapo uh, IKEA wheels uh, which uh, had very tiny holes but these ones obviously have uh, giant holes intended for M8 bolts. Uh, so I just uh, did a test piece here, drilled a couple of uh, holes, this is 7.5mm, this is 7mm into this piece of wood and uh, bolted it in with the original M8 bolts which are actually just the right length to fit into the wood of a drawer. Isn't that perfect? So I think I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and uh, drill some giant holes in the wood and drive these in. I don't have a proper adapter so I've done one of the ugliest things I have ever learned to do which is to just use an extension in the chuck of a drill to turn it into a makeshift driver. Works very well. Very well indeed. So now I've just got to get the other one up on the bench, bolt them together and uh, put the wheels on and then figure out some kind of a surface finish. Might use that board. And there we have cl uh, clamped and uh, assembled the two halves of the drawer, drawer cabinet. So I've just used a uh, 30mm uh, screws. Uh, I had to pre-drill some tiny holes for them just to, to get through the plastic uh, or wood, whatever this coating is, probably plastic, uh, and get it to adhere. So it's uh, reasonably straight. All things considered, this is not really perfectly straight to begin with since it's such old stuff, but yeah, it's decent enough. So now I've just got to bolt the four wheels on. And we'll pretty much be good to go. 20 minutes to bedtime. Let's do it. There we go. Two down. Two to you. And there... We have them. All four wheels are mounted, and it is now way past my bedtime. 
All right, I've got it on the floor. So I was originally going to use a couple of brown sheets to cover this, but sadly, those sheets are exactly 30 centimeters deep, and this whole thing is about 60.5 deep, so it just did not add up. So uh, instead of that, I'm going to move one step up the fancy ladder of my old board scraps and use some of this white stuff because it's actually. Uh, 40 centimeters deep so I can get to uh, complete coverage with a decent amount of overhang and it's going to turn out pretty okay I think uh, I have the boards pre-worn eight uh, this is an old shoe rack from one of my very temporary jobs and it has seen better days but it's going to be good enough to throw some tools at so I just need to get rid of these uh, uh, board like boards on this one and I think I'd probably leave it be on this one just have an extra board going across the rear there to act as a bit of a bump stop when I uh, slide it around since uh, it's going to be bumping up against uh, those mains of that you can see the red little uh, foam pieces uh, acting as bump stops so uh, lesson learned there I want to make the whole thing ever so slightly wider than this one is it would be kind of neat to make it almost rub against both of these uh, table legs since I don't want to have, I don't want myself to have the possibility of uh, shoving stuff in between here like I, like, like I already have because it's just going to uh, turn into a whole big mess of uh, the key that uh, uh, bumping into it and uh, things inevitably leaning against that and coming flying when I try to pull it out. So, lesson learned, let's get to measuring and get to bolting. And I get to finally use my ridiculously expensive battery powered Makita saw. Rip my wallets. Alright, let's see if brushless... Let's see if this thing's worth worth its money. It works, I guess. All right, the machine saw seems to be doing a pretty decent job. Not that I know anything about circular source, worth of this being my first, but uh, even if you consider a 300 euro cost for a cabinet like this, eh, could do worse. <laughs> I'm just justifying my purchase. Uh, so I've now measured this up. Uh, it's about 61 by 86, uh, the top plate for the drawer. And I think since I've already got these uh, leftover wood pieces, which used to bolt onto these, uh, and we've already got one on that one. I might as well just uh, install them like so to have a little edge and everything stops stuff from falling apart and that also gives it a rather rougher, more rigid, rough, durable uh, wooden surface on the edges which are pretty much guaranteed to be dragging against these in the long run so it's not going to hurt at all. Alright, then there we have the pretty much completed product bolted together and pretty decent except we have a rather a considerable gap in the middle here. It's uh, about a millimetre at worst. Luckily though, there's a very easy and effective remedy for that. There we go. Matthias Wendell, look and learn. Alright, and there we have it. Mounted on the actual cabinet. Yeah, I have aligned it by the very scientific method of checking whether or not this is roughly equal to the width of one of these. And it should be on there reasonably straight. I just attached it using uh, the original mounting holes uh, for the tabletop, which are just uh, there, four, uh, two on each of these. So there's a total of eight screws holding the top on. I think it should be sufficient enough. If not, we're going to find out. So, uh, as for the fit for the intended application, it's uh, worked out rather well. We've got uh, a 
just over a centimeter there and just under a centimeter there pretty much what I was shooting for however since this is so much taller than uh, the other one uh, it does stick out a bit further than I'd like to this is going to be a trap for feet and knees so I'm just going to kind of ugly take a, a chunk out of this wood there to give it a couple extra centimeters of movement room I think that will be good enough if I really want to I can even uh, cut into uh, an ash like I can just cut off a piece of this to be frank because then it'll just be resting on there and that is uh, exactly the same depth as the end of the cabinet so I don't want to take any chunks out of the uh, fiberboard and I will have to remove that screw before making a cut so let's just get that done and over with alright there we go so I've cut the slots and I've modified my bump stops to be a bit more compact I just cut a slot for the wood there and I cut a roughly 45 degree angle uh, on that to just uh, make it sink in between the bit while still providing some dampening so I can just let's see a proof of concept boink so that's uh, gained me a couple of centimeters actually well perhaps uh, oh yes it's a couple of centimeters uh, it'll have to be good enough I'm not going to try cutting this whole thing in half and I don't have any lower caster so that's good enough all that remains is to load up the uh, shelves, and then we'll be good to go. Alright, and there we go. That's pretty much the final iteration. It seems to be pretty decent to work around, even though it's protruding a bit. Welcome to the toilet flushing room. Uh, and uh, I have noticed, however, that uh, these uh, drawers aren't really... Uh, good, good enough for heavy loads because uh, the bottoms are pretty much just cardboard and you can see my solution to that there uh, they, they tend to uh, sag down I've got an example here they sag down like this and that in turn makes the uh, bars on the sides uh, contract they kind of get pulled together uh, under load so the whole uh, box gets narrower and then it falls off the tracks and we get to dicky boxes like this one which this is really stiff uh, to pull in and out and there you go it just fell off the edge there uh, but if I do as I did with the sockets and wrenches box and just uh, measure up a slightly wider than the box is supposed to be a piece of wood and just uh, nail it to the edges and screw it to the bottom that fixes the whole issue and uh, frankly you don't really have any much use for the area in the back since there's no stopping these boxes coming out you really don't want to extend them more than halfway anyway so I think I'm uh, as time progresses uh, gonna do something like this to most of the boxes boxes, drawers, and it's going to turn out rather decent. Uh, it's going to be a shitload of uh, uh, little wood pieces I have to assemble, though. Yuck, a bother. But anyway, let's just round it up. R round, round this up. This has been the first and probably only installment of Furniture with FF, so take care and I'll see you around. Cheers.